Good evening all. Uh, welcome to the webinar series, Day 4, hosted by Taiwan Malari Association in associating with the uh, Secretary College, Tevara, and Education Consultant and Career Council mentors for you. And today, Dr. Sujit and myself, Anu, are uh, moderating today's webinar. Now, let me introduce you the webinar structure. The speech is designed for 20 minutes PowerPoint presentation and uh, 10 minutes after starting the talk, you can enter the questions or doubts at the comment section of the live streaming. Once the talk has been finished, there will be a question and answer section for another 30 minutes. If our discussion is going beyond 30 minutes, we will stop then and we'll do a separate video for the unanswered questions and telecast so. Uh, for today's first webinar, the topic is role of Taiwan in the semiconductor industry. From more than the last three decades, Taiwan semiconductor industry or ICT sector has been known for its ability to compete with the top technology provider countries and has pioneered in chip production. Companies in Taiwan are engaged separately in each process of manufacturing of semiconductor from chip designing to its fabrication, from welfare and to its packaging and testing. And this makes them stand apart from the multinationals such as Intel, which work on the integrated approach. And this approach has allowed Taiwan to gain and position itself as a leader in IC fabrication and IC packaging and testing sector. And our speaker is Dr. Gayatri Pillai. She is a postdoctoral fellow in the Institute of Nano Engineering and Microsystems, National Tsinghua University, Taiwan. She got her MS and PhD degrees in 2015 and 20 respectively from the Institute of Nano Engineering and Microsystems, National Tsinghua University, and her Bachelor of Technology degree from in 2013 from Cochin University of Science and Technology, India. And she has been actively working on different domains of MEMS since 2013 with a special focus on piezoelectric MEMS. She has also been recognized as an honorary member of the Phi Tau Phi Scholastic Honor Society. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Gayatri Pillai for the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Anok, for that wonderful introduction. And I would also like to extend my gratitude to one and all who have logged in to attend the seminar today. So I'm Gayatri Pillai. I am a postdoctoral research fellow in National Tsinghua University, Taiwan. I have been working in the field of semiconductor for the past eight years, where I have done my master's and my PhD degree. So today's topic of this webinar is that I would be delivering is role of Taiwan in the semiconductor industry. This is a brief overview of the talk. The uh, presentation shall start with the uh, question that is why, right? Why semiconductor technology or why should we be more aware of the advances in the semiconductor technology and how exactly is it influencing my life? So once that is done, I would move over to Taiwan, which is the main topic that is the lead player in the semiconductor industry. Once I familiarize why Taiwan is that important in the semiconductor, I would move over to the industries and the national labs which are based out of Taiwan, which make this impossible feat possible. So once that is done, I would like to explain more about it using an example of TSMC. This is not only a success story of Taiwan, but is also a global icon in the semiconductor industry. And once we cover all these things, we have a few concluding remarks. So let us now start with the talk, that is why semiconductor technology. The people who are not in working in the semiconductor field may have this question, why is semiconductor technology important to me? And also for all those who are attending the talk today or might see the video later, we might all have this question as to why is semiconductor important to me? So answer is as simple as this. For example, the, uh, the gadget that you're using today to listen to my talk and the gadget I'm using today here to deliver my talk all are an example of semiconductor technology application. For example, the desktop or the laptop that you have has billions of transistors in it. So when I say the term transistor, it itself is a semiconductor device. So that shows how much semiconductor elements 
surrounding us in day to day life so once now that is stable uh, that is given out there that a semiconductor is important to us let us see how exactly it is so we know that 5g 4g are all the impending and the present technologies which are revolutionizing how we live right so this is a report from ericsson which shows that the industry digitalization could be worth 700 billion dollars by 2030 so now 2030 is about 10 years ahead of us but there are technological experts who are predicting the impact that will be continuing that is a semiconductor will continue continue to influence us for the next decade and even more so so given this how exactly or what are the or what are the components that we have right now which is a part of the semiconductor technology so these are the pictures which is a very pictorial representation which goes on to show what are the components we have in our day to day life for example mobile phones automobile IoT sensor. So IoT is a, a relatively new term in the past decade. So it is basically an integration of several kind of sensors and the communication hub along with the data processing. So which is also known as the cloud computing. These are all enabled by the advances in artificial intelligence and also high speed communication by five. Right? So now we know that semiconductor is important to us. so what are the companies or what are the major providers which are giving us access or which are delivering such kind of devices to us so let us look at that so one of it is intel so intel is a company which is a multinational company based out of united states so a common uh, application of the intel processors that is the x86 are delivered by intel and which is what we use in our computers uh, commonly right they revolutionized the personal computer era so next of it is the samsung and samsung is a company based out of south korea they are uh, samsung is not just a semiconductor based company it is a conglomerate it has a huge number of industries working under the same umbrella but samsung is also investing in the semiconductor fabrication it is uh, going to open up a fabrication unit in 2023 possibly in us for their and they also provide services to big companies such as tesla and many other companies as such so next one is taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company which is now also known as tsmc it is based out of taiwan so the headquarters of Thai, um, tsmc is sinchu that is exactly the location from which i am delivering my talk today so tsmc is one of the biggest suppliers of uh, semiconductor chips to tech giants such as apple so we know that apple does not compromise on performance so tsmc does have the cut edge technology to meet the demands of such big companies such as uh, TSMC many automobile companies uh, and also Nvidia A AMD etc so next other two companies are the Qualcomm which is also another USA based company and we have SK Hynix which is a Korean based company which is known for its memory devices so an interesting thing to look at this slide is that the three companies that we listed here are the companies that are from the east asian countries and out of these three companies the main focus will be on the contribution of taiwan for today's talk so we will be mainly focusing on TSMC So now, twenty uh, twenty. Let's just rewind a year back, and that is twenty twenty. It was a, a pandemic year, right? So many industries had gone down, but semiconductor industry is one such industry which sustained the testing of even a global pandemic and showed that it still continues to rise. And it's not just. survive it did not just survive the pandemic but it continued to thrive so if this is a plot which shows that the global export has been uh, increased by about 23.4 percentage when compared to 2019 so a, a so a industry which can actually survive a pandemic goes on to show that the impact it has and it's something which cannot be stopped So this is a uh, inside out approach that I would say so in the center we have a semiconductor device so that will be basically a micrometer nanometer device and that goes uh, undergoes many several kinds of integration 
integrated circuits, we have packaging, and once these packagings are done, they become integrated systems. Now, this is quite technical. For people who are not from this industry, it might be quite difficult to understand what I just meant. So, integrated systems can be directly applied to applications. So, what are the applications that are using semiconductor? So, these are some of the examples. Okay, some are being automotive, robotics, the handsets, the mobile handsets that you have is an example of communication, healthcare, right? The ultrasonic, etc. All have semiconductor devices. Now, since the today's talk is not quite a technical one, so we won't be going into any technical details. But let us take an example out of this automotive, which we are all familiar, irrespective of whatever background we are coming from. So how does semiconductor influence the automotive business and what are these applications? So next slide shows actually a blast of arrows which each indicate a certain application which are powered by semiconductor devices. So they include processing, sensors, etc. So we might all be familiar with certain uh, automotive advertisements which shows that they have a certain level of safety, right? That is when you hit a target at a certain speed and airbag is being deployed so what exactly controls internal processings are all done by certain semiconductor processing units integrated circuits and we have a tiny device known as MEMS accelerometer which actually triggers this airbag deployment and MEMS is also a classic example of semiconductor so this is the slide that shows how exactly even a day-to-day -day application such as automotives has been revolutionized by the semiconductor conductor. So this is a slide that shows that semiconductor gives us a holistic experience. Now, why is that? Is because semiconductor, it start, the processing starts from a silicon paper. It undergoes several different kinds of fabrication. And finally, you get a device. Now, that device undergoes packaging, integration, etc. This slide particularly shows the evolution. That is, we, have a, we had a desktop earlier which could save the data, but now it's in the terms of servers, cloud clouds, data centers, et cetera. And similarly, automobiles, it was initially an internal combustion one, but now it is fuel cell vehicles. So this is basically a revolution of multiple domains, multiple sectors, all being powered by very tiny devices, which are known as semiconductors. So these are the um, some of the applications that this uh, semiconductor technology has been giving us. And we might not even be aware of what exactly goes behind. So now I have been talking about why is semiconductor important to us, why semiconductor industry survived a pandemic, and also the semiconductor revolutionized in different sectors of life. So, but I did not explain what a semiconductor is. So without going into too much of technical details, let me just explain what is a semiconductor. So there are different kinds of materials. Roughly, we can categorize them as a conductor, a semiconductor, and an insulator. So a conductor is something which can help the conduction without very less resistance. An insulator is something which does not allow the flow of charge. So now we have an intermediate uh, category, which is known as semiconductor, whose conductivity can be controlled. That is, the conduction is controlled using the carrier flow control. And different application needs different kind of current, different kind of voltages, different kind of amplitude limitation. Everything is application dependent. So now we have a material which can be engineered depending on whatever application you want. Next, let us go over to the main topic that is Taiwan, right? Taiwan, the lead player in semiconductor industry. Now, this is a very strong statement to say that Taiwan is a very strong leader, but how and why? So let us just go back, not too much in the history, just last year. So 2020, many um, countries had to be shut down, but thankfully due to the excellent COVID strategy of Taiwan, we did not have any problems and all the, fun all the foundries were functioning quite well. So what happened is that many automotive companies did not have any chips coming from other fab units because they all were shut down. So all of them had to rely on TSMC. And we know that several companies or these kind of high-end automotives will not rely on a foundry unless the foundry gives them the best quality chips. So that is where the picture of TSMC comes in. So TSMC was able to is able to deliver such kind of cutting-edge technology. Now this news became 
so widespread and tsm and taiwan was on the global scale again where the optics changed and this is what the news about taiwan is so that is that is the world is dangerously dependent on taiwan for semiconductors because there is not many foundries in the world which can give uh, semiconductor processed chips as good as tsmc so now let us see uh, so now we have seen how Taiwan is powering the world in the semiconductor business. So let's see what are the industries and the national labs that are allowing this to happen, right? So this is the semiconductor industries in Taiwan. This is a report from a Taiwan semiconductor industry. And then we have the numbers here. So there says that there's 238 IC fabulous design houses, 15 fabrication companies, 37 fabrication and testing houses, 17 substrate suppliers, 11 wafer suppliers, 3 mask makers, and 3 lead frame companies. So these are different kind of stages that would be needed to deliver a fully processing semiconductor IC chip. So it is good to see that Taiwan being a small island nation houses all the high tech technologies that would be needed to deliver a high performance chip. So these are some of the examples of the top Taiwanese semiconductor companies. So I have just divided them into two, that is the fabrication based and the fabless based. So the fabrication based are the TSMC and UMC. TSMC is the global example actually. So it, everybody who works in the semiconductor field knows about TSMC. And then we have MediaTek and Foxconn, which are fabless, which does the um, assembly. So they are known as fabless because these companies do not do the fabrication. So there can be two kinds of semiconductor companies, one that does the fabrication and the other which does not does the fabrication. So these are just few examples of the top Taiwanese semiconductor companies. And this is a recent market analysis, which is given out by the market research reports, which shows that the Taiwan TSMC company is leading the markets by a staggering amount of 354.73 billion. And please bear in mind that this is a report that came out on mid of 2020, which was again a very tough year for many sectors of businesses, but semiconductor thrived very well. So there are different kinds of national labs which conduct semiconductor researchers. So one is a national chip implementation center. The other is a national nano device lab. So recently, both of these institutions were merged under and they are now known as the Taiwan Semiconductor Research Institute. They allow different kind of facilities. They even open up for academia researchers. So you can actually do your fabrication. They also have device testing facilities. And also they are an interface between TSMC and the academia. So this is a very strong uh, institution by the government which enables people to use these high-tech facilities. So in irrespective of them just contributing to the industry, they are also contributing heavily in the academia. So this is a report which shows that this particular TSRI was presented four papers at IEDM 2020. Now to speak of why IEDM, it is one of the pioneering conferences where the high-tech novel ideas are presented by companies such as Intel, IBM, etc. So whichever are the leading technologies, they do report at IEDM and it is one of the most highly reputed conferences. So it is very um, a, a moment of success to see that TSRI presented four papers at IEDM. So this shows that they are not only contributing to the revenue or to the industry, but also to the academia uh, field as well. So now let us go to TSMC, that is the influential icon or the success story of Taiwan Semiconductor. TSMC is rather a very new young company. It was established merely 1987 by Maurice Chang, and it is a Taiwanese multinational semiconductor contract based manufacturing and also design company. So TSMC is not just the manufacturing hub, it is also a thriving and a vital R&D for all the latest semiconductor fabrication technologies. And it is one of the world's most valuable semiconductor company and is also world's largest dedicated independent semiconductor foundry. Its headquarters, as I mentioned earlier, is Sinchu Science Park in Taiwan. It has a global capacity of delivering as high as millions of wafers as per of last year's um, statistics.
And TSMC is the first foundry to provide five and seven nanometer production capabilities. And they are being used in a Apple A14 Bionic chips and also a Apple M1 SoC. So they are also, TSMC is also the first company to commercialize the EUV fabrication technology on a large scale. So TSMC has now, again, as I mentioned, similarly for TSRI, they are also actively publishing and also participating in academia researches as well. So TSMC has been recognized by the IEEE community, which is one of the largest engineering community, and it has been given the Corporate Innovation Award. It is also an active participant in ISSCC conferences, which is also one of the it's actually one of the toughest conferences to get an acceptance. It is said that a conference paper in ISSCC is almost as good as or even better than, uh, than a journal paper. So that is how competitive these conferences are. And TSMC is a regular presence in such uh, mediums as well. It is also an active participant in IEDM. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the pioneer conferences in the electronic society. And going over to its customers, so who all are TSMC delivering the products? So we have Apple, Google gaming targets such as Nintendo, Qualcomm, automotive industries such as Ford, and also uh, signal processors such as NVIDIA and also AMD. So these companies are the ones which provides high-end technology, high-end user performance. And at the heart of everything is a semiconductor chip. So all these are only as good as the individual semiconductor processing units. And it is very good to see that all the semiconductor processing units, not all, but majority of them are coming from TSMC. So this goes on to show what is the global impact that a small country like Taiwan and the semiconductor conductor industry that it houses, DSMC has on a global scale. So it's not only producing certain products, but it is also having extremely good impact in the research. For example, TSMC, there are reports that coming out that TSMC could already have developed the two nanometer process and may be ready for mass production by 2024. So when these TSMC goes down in the process lane, it means that the processing speed, that the communication speed, everything is going to get faster for us. So this is one of a very good landmark achievement for TSMC. One small example of a strong partnership that TSMC has with big tech giants such as Apple is that Apple's uh, bionic chips are already from TSMC, but it is not only stopping in that. It is also partnering up with TSMC to give the OLED panels, that is for the AR and the VR devices. So it will revolutionize the entertainment and also the visual media. So this is how uh, TSMC is growing and is also partnering with the biggest tech giants so as to provide world-class facilities and also technology and also an amazing user interface for people like us who are the users. So finally, a few concluding remarks are that the Taiwan is trying to accelerate the adoption of the 5G and also the artificial intelligence moving towards automation. So Taiwan does not only house a very good um, semiconductor company, but is also the hub of various other um, tech giants such as ASUS, HTC, etc. So there is a very good, strong um, pathway for Taiwan to lead and to make Taiwan a high-end production hub for Asia and so that the entire world can benefit from the technological advancements that's happening in this island nation and is also planning to become an advanced semiconductor manufacturing center. So this was my talk. I thank you everyone for my, the attention and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Thank you, uh, Gayatri, for the nice presentation. And uh, we have some questions during the registration okay. and also in the live chat. Uh, first, this is a roadmap for integrated photonics foundry. Yeah, so for the TSMC, we actually, as the 
user outside we are not very much aware about the photonics in I mean, integration but also because they are scaling down their devices to the nanometer scale so tsmc is definitely looking towards the photonics integration but in the market as such we are not aware about their development because they are all very highly confidential so unless it's a mature technology the users will not be allowed i mean given access to those information right now so there is going on talks going on about the because there's a very good topic about the silicon integration that is a photonics integration it is a very sought after field because that will combine not only the electrical but also the optical communication which will speed up the communication by several times so this is definitely in the roadmap of tsmc but as an end user like us we are not privy to such kind of information i think it's clear <laughs> and another question is are there any prerequisites for students or professionals who want to pursue a career in semiconductor, especially application R&D? Yeah. Okay. So for TSMC or companies such as those, they do look into the uh, if you have if you are applying for a job, for example, they would look into the course work you have done, or do you have a certificate based course which shows that you have hands on experience on some of the semiconductor processes. So one way to get about that is that, for example, students studying in Taiwan, we have a lot because Taiwan does have a lot of semiconductor access. We do have a lot of it incorporated in our coursework as such but for people from outside it is very difficult to have access to such courses so there are a lot of online courses that are available which which will familiarize with you with the semiconductor technology and also one another way that we can go about this is that or professionals can do internships in, in, the, in not only in the industry but also research institutes which do have semiconductor fabrication processes this will be a very good add-on because these companies look forward to students or um, interview candidates having hands-on experience so it is very crucial that you not only have theoretical knowledge but also to do some internships in companies or research institutes which can expose you to such kind of technologies. Yeah, actually we have we already have our same question. Like mm. uh, does TSMC provide internships to PhD students from abroad? Mm. Abroad, I am not very sure, but in Taiwan we have a portal where the students can apply for internships. But I'm not very sure if they are, if they are open for students from outside or not. Okay, yeah. and uh, we have another question. Uh, where do Taiwan stand in terms of progress in thin film deposition techniques? For example, atomic layer deposition or molecular layer deposition? Yeah, actually, Taiwan is doing pretty well in the ALD and also thin film depositions because uh, they all their integrated solutions that you have that we have right now in the form of uh, devices are an excellent statement for the deposition techniques that they have and they are actually hiring a lot of phd graduates who has uh, had an experience on the material deposition and also so so that the stoichiometry doesn't change and also the crystal growth is also as good as at and also you can see that because dsmc is going down in the nanometer scale the atomic um, now it's the physics is changing totally so even in that end, PSMC is investing a lot of R&D resources in that. So Taiwan, of course, stand in front. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> another one. Uh, other than Taiwan, where does PSMC have its fabrication units? So the TSMC is very particular about the countries to which they uh, release the high, you know, highly confidential or the latest technologies. So TSMC basically has their many fabrication units spread out in Sinchu, Tainan, and also outside Taiwan, they have it in the US and also China. Okay. So yeah. mainly US, China, Taiwan. Adam. Yeah, so Taiwan is the place where all the latest technology nodes are released. And they are also having, TSMC is also having a new fab unit probably by 2024 in Arizona. So that will be one of the advanced technology nodes that will be outside of Taiwan. Okay, I think yeah. it's clear. And another one, why Tesla chips battery are exploding? And what 
or steps TFMC will take in future for covering it? Do you have uh, some idea? Uh, <laughs> I am so sorry. I cannot speak on behalf of TSMC and their targets and their, what approaches they will be taking. So I cannot answer that question. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, another one. Does these semiconductor companies provide access to academia research, research firms outside Taiwan? Okay, so outside Taiwan, it basically depends a lot on the country of origin from which you are trying to make a request to access these technology nodes. And one very important thing is that even though I said TSMC has already achieved the five nanometer, seven nanometer technology, all, only the technology which are quite mature and old are generally accessible to the industry to the academia for example the 0.18 the 0.35 etc are accessible and also the latest nodes but then outside taiwan what we do is that the companies should have uh, the company and the university or the nation which is housing that university should have a non-disclosure agreement so there is a lot of legality behind it so if that is clear then the academia people can access the TSMC process, but with a certain price. Okay, and also, uh, I think uh, this academy, I mean, in the universities and TSMC have some collaborations also. Yeah, they do have collaborations, and but again, the, te the technology that an outsider can access in TSMC is very limited. So they have the upper say, the TSMC has the upper say what can be given out to an academia or what can be given out to an industry. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we have another question. Uh, can uh, masters, MS, MS graduates get mm. internships in TSMC mm. at uh, US? Do they look for prior, uh, prior experience for interns? I believe they do. You can get an internship in TSMC. You have they have a portal. Uh, it is active, I guess, every six months, uh, and we can apply. It's a basically a normal internship application. You need to put references and what all courses you have done, and basically a research statement as well. So they will review your applications, and depending on the hiring committee, they can give you an internship position. But it is possible for master students and even the PhD students to apply for internships. Okay, I think it's clear. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another one is, apart from national labs and companies, how does the university in Taiwan contribute the technology advancements? Yeah. Okay. So in my talk, I did not focus anything about the universities in Taiwan, which are doing semiconductor based researches. So it is interesting to see that all the leading universities, not just the leading university, most of the universities in Taiwan are heavily contributing towards the semiconductors. For example, National Taiwan University, National Tsinghua University, National Chaotong University, etc. So all of them have a very strong electrical department as well. So they are are using the TSMC, UMC's uh, integrated circuits to develop their technology. So they are also contributing. And one another thing is that companies such as TSMC actually have chip, in, chip competitions as well. So all these academia researchers can go under competition and they also win certain awards. And when a university or when a certain lab wins award, they're actually given few extra runs in these uh, TSMC platforms. So the universities do contribute significantly. And I think our last question, mm -hmm. does these companies recruit Indian graduates directly? <laughs> So as far as recruitment to companies such as TSMC are concerned, they do recruit Indians directly. There are examples of many IITs because there is uh, in IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, Madras, etc. TSMC does go to these institutes for campus placement. Uh, so there is a direct recruitment of Indian students from these top tier universities to work in TSMC. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, we have one more question. Just now we put another question. Master program candidate have any opportunity in uh, TSMC? Uh, I IELTS needed for the course. So I think it's not clear actually. Mm. Can that means that uh, IELTS is needed or not? 
Uh, basically, the master's students do have a greater opportunity in TSMC. They do uh, hire a lot of master graduates. So, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, they, you have to go through the TSMC career portal and apply and also look out for the post that you're applying. And they do have a prerequisite so you can check that out and then apply. So, yeah, master's students do have opportunity in TSMC. Okay, and uh, one question uh, is the YouTube streaming is the uh, role of Taiwan in 5G technology. So Taiwan is actually uh, rolling out a lot of chips, right? Like, for example, um, the TS, the new Apple phones, as you see, can support the 5G, right? So I, as I mentioned earlier, TSMC is the one that provides the bionic chips for uh, Apple. So yeah, so TSMC's collaboration with Apple is one classic example, one class, one of the many classic examples of how Taiwan is contributing to the next 5G revolution. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, okay. Thank you, Gayatri, for the okay. question and answer section. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the talk and taking time out. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again for attending the webinar. And if you wish to learn more about the topic, please feel free to email us. Now, I am welcoming Dr. Sujit for handling the second session of today's webinar. Dr. Sujit, please. Thank you, Dr. Anno. Welcome to the second session of Taiwan Malayali Association's Taiwan Career and Education Webinar Series 2021, Day 4. The webinar series is supported by Mendes for You and Sacred Heart College, Devara. Our second speaker is Mr. Adat Bijol. Currently, he is pursuing his PhD from National Chowdhury University, Taiwan. He completed his bachelor's and master's in electronic engineering from Anna University, Chennai. He worked as a faculty in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in MES College of Engineering, Kerala for 11 years. And he is a senior member of IEEE. Today, he is talking about research scope and career perspectives in IC design. IC design is always one of the major interests of electronic engineer. The opportunities are widespread around the world. The webinar will give an insight on how to become an IC design engineer. The talk will be for uh, 15 to 20 minutes. After the uh, finishing the talk, there will be 30 minutes of question and answer section. You can type your questions uh, either in the YouTube streaming or in the Google Meet uh, comment box. Now I am welcoming Mr. Adat Bijoy for giving his talk. Welcome. Okay. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sujit, for the nice introduction, and also I thank uh, Dr. Gayatri for the wonderful and informative session. I am Adat Bijoy, currently pursuing my PhD at National Chowtang University, Taiwan. This presentation is about the research scopes and career opportunities in IC design. Not every student who graduate from universities or college are much aware of opportunities and career scopes in VLSI industry. The content in this presentation will help you to know what IC design is, skills required to become a successful IC design engineer, and how to choose universities that will help you to find better jobs. This presentation will be beneficial to students currently pursuing bachelor's or master's and looking forward for a career in semiconductor industry or looking for research openings. Apart from current students, people who are currently working in different fields and looking for a career change, particularly in semiconductor industry, as an IC design engineer, the information presented here will be beneficial for your transition. Also, High school students, if you are passionate in electronics and want to know more about the future prospects, this presentation would be helpful to you as well. I would like to give a very brief insight about this topic and I encourage you to ask more questions to make this session more useful. I express my sincere thanks to uh, Taiwan Malayali Association, Sacred Heart College Tevra and Mendes for you for their support. I'll be going through the brief aspects of IC design, 
then about the skills required that will help you to find good jobs in the industry and then about the research scopes in IC design. I would like to start with the basic definition of IC design. Integrated circuit design or IC design is a subset of electronics engineering encompassing the particular logic and circuit design techniques required to design integrated circuits or ICs. To get an idea about the rapid growth of semiconductor industry, see the first microprocessor developed by Intel in 1971, which was Intel 4004, a 4-bit microprocessor, which has 2,300 number of transistors fabricated in 10 micrometer technology, which runs at the speed of 740 kilohertz. Next is a recently launched processor by Intel, in, which was launched in 2019, which is the 10th generation core i7 processor, which has approximately 3 billion transistors. That is 3 to 10 power 9 number of transistors on a single die fabricated in 10 nanometer technology which is thousands of times thinner than the human hair and it runs at very fast speed. So you can see the revolutionary change happened in the span of 50 years. This flowchart gives an overall picture about the IC design flow. I will not be going into the details of each and every block, but this will keep you stay connected with the rest of the slides. To get a brief idea, we start with the system specification and mostly the specification will be based on customer's needs. With the available system specification, we develop a behavior model which gives information about input and output configurations of the system. Then we have two design circuits, be it analog or digital or both analog and digital, then create layout, fabricate and then test. So in this talk, I'll be talking only about the highlighted topic, which is the job of an IC design engineer. So in the right hand side, you can see a figure which gives an example for each blocks given in this IC design flow picture. Why should we care about IC design? Uh, electronics play a vital role in our daily life. Here are some applications to say drones, robotic surgery, various robotic applications Several electronic gadgets like mobile phones, digital thermometers, autonomous navigation systems. These are just few to mention. Now take a moment to think, how will a day look for you without electronics? From your morning wake up alarm to the relaxation music before sleep. Apart from mobile phones and computers, today most houses have a lot of electronic gadgets like vacuum cleaners, microwave oven, air conditions, just if you walk from your living room to the kitchen, so you can see like noticeable lot number of electronic gadgets around us. The future of electronics is much more fascinating with virtual reality, flexible electronics, more sophisticated robots, and highly equipped autonomous vehicles. So this gives a picture about the importance of electronics today, applications from like Today, most of these uh, applications we submit online, online services like paying bills, online shopping, online banking, online learning, and remote working. So also, if any of your friends or members in your family is traveling an airplane, you can even check the trajectory of the airplane. You can virtually see how that plane is actually flying. So there is the advanced advancements in IC industry. By this time, you might have got a clear picture about the role of an IC designer who made all these innovations possible. And IC designer is not the only role player, but he, uh, IC designer is one among many role players in the semiconductor industry. So are you a graduate specialist in electronics or a student currently doing your bachelor's or master's in electronics? Do you want to be a part of future innovations? If you're confused about starting a career as an IC design engineer, this is your time to think of. The world is running behind AI and machine learning, and today this was possible only because of the developments of powerful hardware that is capable of running large-scale machine learning algorithms, computing millions of parameters. Now we will see the skill, skills required to become a good IC design engineer. Unlike software jobs, where you need analytical and programming skills to become a good IC design engineer, you need relevant skills and very good exposure to tools. Subject knowledge is very important. 
equally practical experience is also very very much important when i say industry standard tools you can learn theory using freely available tools but that will help you only to understand the concepts for example if you use uh, such free tools to simulate a filter or an inverter for example you can see the response of the filter or the inverter but the parameters like voltage frequency delay etc all all these varies with tools so in order to get a solid understanding about these concepts especially about how the performance varies with respect to the change in any of the different parameters you have to work on standard tools and that knowledge is very much important for you to get a job in industry i will give more details on this in the upcoming slides the icd sen can be categorized into two or uh, say analog and digital for which you need different skill sets to be an expert in each domain to start with analog you need to have relevant technical knowledge about analog signal processing control theory analog ic design and some knowledge about semiconductor processing so you might be wondering why we should know about signal processing and other subjects to design a circuit so for example if you are asked if you are asked to design a simple filter for say 5g or 6g applications without some knowledge in signal processing it will be very hard to realize a filter that will be a good fit for that application also you should check how stable your design will be for that you need some background knowledge in analog signal processing and control theory as well few circuits which comes in the category of analog circuit design are pls uh, phase lock loops oscillators active filters matching circuits so mostly analog circuits will be used in rf based applications Uh, we can also integrate uh, in the, uh, inductors inside the chip apart from subject knowledge you should have a good exposure to industry standard tools which is very important to grab a job in industry commonly used tools are the tools from cadence and synopsis to be a good digital designer you need to have knowledge about digital communication digital signal processing and digital ict set to be a good digital ic designer you must be good in hdl programming either vhdl or verilog hdl the choice between them depends upon the country and the university associated with because few universities and few countries do work on vhdl and few others work on verilog hdl now if you are interested in ic design and uh, if you do not know how to take the first step you can start by reading some simple papers or magazine articles which will induce some interest on the subject then try to design and implement simple circuits that will help you to understand the design get familiarized with tools and slowly you will get engaged to it debug debug skill is also very important so if you are asked to verify a design which was designed by someone else you should know how to do that so basically all the skills mentioned here need practice so more you practice you can master the tools participating in design competitions will be a good experience check the given websites uh, from xilinx and ieee solid circuit society they can they design contests every year you can select one among them and you can try to implement it you will get a good experience the world is moving towards automation so many works which were done by human beings were replaced by machines in the last two decades at least so mostly influenced by the development in semiconductor industry since electronics has become a necessity for all people in today's life electronic products must be made cheaper so that common people can use them today everyone needs access to technology during this pandemic especially everyone had to use mobile phones or computers to attend school the scope in electronics are mainly focused on miniaturization means reducing the size of the device and lowering the cost because the cost increases with respect to the area consumed by the design the technology is advancing like 5g 6g robotics artificial intelligence machine learning big data and so on. and we need sophisticated hardware to bring all these technologies to reality so there is always something left for an ic design engineer to develop either reduce the size and hence lower the cost or design circuit circuits which will be compatible for advancing technologies 
our ultimate aim in joining a university or a research lab is to find a job after graduation for that industry standard tools are very very important so also if the university you prefer have access to latest technological nodes then you can do bigger stuff fabrication facility is also more important tapeout experience is very important for analog designs the big companies would prefer tapeout experience if you or especially if you are an analog guy if your professor or your, if your lab have tapeout license then that will be good else it will be very expensive to tape out a chip if you want to tape out is the final result of the ic design process before the chip is sent for manufacture so tape out experience is more important because the eda tools give the functional verification of the circuit after fabricating the device it is not always guaranteed to get the exact same results what we got during simulations when you tape out a chip so this also depends on the complexity of the design so when you work for a company you have to design chips which are to be used in some real systems and hence need to be fabricated unless you have this experience you will not know the challenges you will face during the fabrication so basically tape out experience will help you become a good ic designer this map shows the spread of vls industries around the world so you can see like us has around like 5 uh, 507 companies china has around like 472 and about 120 companies in india and a small country like taiwan has about 256 vlsa companies uh, this map shows the semiconductor clusters in taiwan 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 based few ic design uh, companies are mediatek novatek and realtek and also taiwan has offices of intel amd qualcomm google google has the hardware manufacturing in taiwan also uh, tsmc Samsung and other companies too. So there are a lot of many other design houses as well. As you saw in the previous slide, Taiwan has about 250 semiconductor based companies, and that is one big reason that you can prefer Taiwan for IC design. The cost of living, tuition, and scholarship were already discussed in previous webinar talks. They are available online. You can listen to them for more details. Without doubt, universities in Taiwan. has work at world class facilities so with this i would like to conclude my talk i will be happy to answer if you have any questions my best wishes to all icds and aspirants thank you uh, thank you mr adam bijoy for your wonderful presentation now the time for question and answer section uh, question and answer section mm, we already received Many, uh, some questions. I am starting with that. You are free, everyone, feel free to type your questions in the comment box of either in the Google Meet or in the YouTube streaming. The first question we received is: How easy to find a job in Taiwan after pursuing a master's or PhD specialized in IC design? Okay. So uh, okay. Uh, so if you want to. So get a job after a master's specialist in IC design. So if you are a graduate from Taiwan, it is quite easy to find a job. Uh, but uh, I'm not quite sure about if you graduate from uh, other countries because I know like uh, IC design companies actually, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of things here they expect some uh, exposure. So if you graduate from good universities. and if you have some good exposure which i have mentioned here so there is high possibility to get a job okay thank you the next question actually that is type of general type question what are the scopes for ic design study uh you, you mean the what is the scope for ic design study yes okay so uh, okay uh, uh, ic design study actually uh, Uh, I don't know whether did you mean that what are jobs you will get after IC design study? Actually, if you are a master graduate in IC design, so you you have a high chance to get a job in IC design houses uh, like uh, so Intel, Qualcomm. Uh, it also depends upon your uh, like more focused area of research, maybe like analog analog design or digital design or something like. That. So if you are more particular about research, then you can also go for like uh, PhD. 
that is also an option after uh, doing a specialist course in ICD center. Yeah. Okay. The next question is, do we need any prerequisite skills to study masters in VLSI? Masters in VLSI? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that is a good question. Uh, because uh, yeah, because like I know a lot of my friends uh, who are uh, did uh, who did their bachelors in uh, India, especially in Kerala, and have been to uh, US uh, top universities in US to proposing their masters. So basically, most of my friends who went, they didn't have any pre background uh, about uh, VLSI. Uh, so, so basically, you don't want any prerequisite. But if you have some uh, uh, like background technical knowledge, and if you are good in like very long PhD programming, and that will help you a lot uh, for your master course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one another question from our uh, YouTube streaming. Is there any job opportunity for an Indian who has completed a diploma in electronics engineering and having a two-year experience as an electronic testing training? Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, there are a lot of companies in India and abroad. Uh, so you can find a job. So maybe uh, at this point of time, it will be very hard for you to get a job in like multinational companies like Intel and other companies because I know people who uh, have joined small VLSA companies uh, if you search Google you will come across like uh, hundreds of uh, uh, companies uh, even in India like uh, not hundreds of companies but still there are a lot of companies in India which uh, even we are not familiar with. Uh, so you can find a company and through experience if you are interested to join big companies your experience will help you to find better jobs in better companies. Okay, thank you. On another question, uh, between analog and digital IT design, which one has got more demand in the current industry? Actually, uh, both has its own uh, uh, importance uh, because today, if you see any, uh, if you, if you take a mobile system or any communication system, it has both analog parts and digital parts. So. Uh, to like personally, I don't think there is no discrimination to say like analog is better or digital is better. Both are equally likely. Uh, there are opportunities for both, but only thing is like uh, it depends on your interest too. Because like for some people, people find analog design as little tougher than digital design. For some people, digital design yes is very easy, and that is why people go for digital design. So, but I have seen like a lot of people are very crazy about analog design. So it completely depend upon your interest and. Uh, like irrespective of analog or digital, you can find good job opp opportunities in industry. Okay. One another question. For a beginner, how long it will take to learn the basics of I IC design? Okay. Uh, so uh, there is no uh, uh, direct answer for this. It depends upon your interest and it depends upon your background as well. So I can give some suggestions like how can you, because like if you're starting with textbook reading, it will be very hard for you to like cover all the subjects and all the things. So as I mentioned in the talk, like you can uh, start with some online uh, courses which are offered in Coursera and uh, EDX, even in, uh, like a lot of NP NPTEL courses will help you a lot. So if you start with the uh, first, my opinion is like you have to find uh, which area you're interested in, analog or digital. So then you get into and uh, first you can try to do some projects which I listed like from you can uh, also projects which were listed by uh, Xilinx or like IEEE Solid State Security Society. So try to do some digital design and actually uh, doing is the best way of learning. So uh, so how far you do, the more quicker you learn. Okay. Uh, one another question. Uh, like what is the best way to end up VLSI industry for a fresher? Uh, when you say fresher, uh, uh, okay. So if you are a B.Tech electronics graduate, uh, it is really a challenge. Uh, it depends upon the university you graduate from and the country you graduate from. So uh, if you uh, are a graduate from like a uh, premier institute in India or abroad, there is a high chance for you to get uh, a job in industry. Else, there are op opportunities, so it will be a little hard for you to focus on the top companies like Intel, Samsung, and other companies. So I suggest uh, there are two options that you can 
think about like if you don't want to go for masters then you have to try for like small scale industry industries there are as i uh, mentioned already there are a lot of small scale industries in india itself so try to get try to get an opening in the small scale industry and that experience will really help you to find get a job in like uh, uh, bigger companies as well and second option is like if you are not hesitant like uh, like if you are interested in pursuing masters and that will be a good choice for you to get into the top companies there are so like there are a lot of options to uh, do masters in uh, especially in vlsi uh, so a lot of people go to us uh, us is quite expensive when compared to the uh, like asian countries so taiwan is one of the place where you can uh, uh, like get good education uh, in more affordable price than compared to western countries uh, so you can check the details of the scholarship and other de uh, other details in previous talks as well so either go for masters uh, there will be a good choice uh, and the best choice or like you have to find a, uh, you have to look for the small scale companies uh, who are doing like chip design okay uh, one another question a very interesting question if one has fabrication experience but no design experience for finding a job in semiconductor industry does one need to learn about design as well <laughs> definitely <laughs> because yeah there is uh, you know like uh, yes definitely you have to learn uh, like design uh, you should have a good background knowledge and uh, exposure to or oh, vlsa based tools and vlsa knowledge to get into vlsa industry that is uh, because like people don't hire uh, just because like uh, you have a good knowledge in some other domain and they are not ready to train you uh, to their requirements because like there are a lot of people with good uh, which meets their requirements as well. yeah uh, maybe the person who asked the question he is uh, thinking like uh, he may know some kind of uh, solar cell fabrication or oil ready fabrication and he know the fabrication but he don't know the uh, ic related thing oh okay, then okay. I, yeah so basically think, yes uh, if you see the semiconductor industry so uh, i i show the flow of ic design like uh, so study from design specification to tape out so there are different categories of design so one only one category is actual ic design so there are other opportunities where you can work in a semiconductor industry you can work in a fab if you have relevant experience and background and if you can work in testing you, you can work in packaging so based on your background your experience actually you can uh, check which category will fit for your experience and background and then you can try uh, i think you can uh, you can make a try that will be a good option yeah yeah the next question for an applied electronics and instrumentation btech graduate from india what all job opportunities are there and which are they okay this is like uh, uh, this question is actually uh, out of this talk but uh, uh, related to this talk like what i can say is like if you are interested in vlsa industry even though you are like from applied electronics and instrumentation it is basically an electronics background so you can do masters in vlsa and then you can uh, find a job in electro like uh, semiconductor industry if you are interested in uh, semiconductor yeah or else like uh, uh, like if you are interested in some other field maybe you can uh, like do masters on that particular area because i think uh, it is not good for me to answer this question i'm sorry for that because like these uh, these were discussed in previous webinars as well yeah yeah thank you oh. Okay, I think there is no other questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Eric Vijay, for your nice presentation and nice Q&A okay. section. Thank you. Thank um, you so much for having me as well. Thank you for all the participants too. Thank you. Uh, so uh, today we are finishing here, and our next webinar will be on uh, coming Saturday, I mean February twenty-seven. That will be our final webinar in this series. And thank you, everyone, and thank you, Sai Rakesh, for the. wonderful youtube streaming also thank you thank you very much